guide me in your truth. Teach me. You are God, my Savior. I put my hope in you all day long. Psalm 25, 5. When you think of the jungle, you think of trees and tangled vines. You think of lush, fertile ground and minerals and the help that it, those things give the planetary ecosystem. You think of heavy rainstorms and raging rapids. Those are all things you think of when you think of the jungle, right? <laughs> no, you're like most people. Uh, you think of the animals. You think of the monkeys and the birds and the poisonous tree frogs and the um, other animals that creep and crawl all over the ground during or in the jungle. Well, have you ever thought about some of the bigger animals that are in the jungle? Like the big snakes and the big cats? Yeah, those animals in the jungle are called predators. Predators are bigger animals that eat other animals, smaller animals, for food um, to be able to survive. So think about a cat. Do you guys have a cat at your house? I have, cat, I have two cats at my house. And my cats are predators to what kind of animal? What kind of animal do you think my cats would be a predator to? Mice. And in my house, which is an old farmhouse, we get mice. Not often, but when we do, I have one, one of my cats, her name is Ethel. She loves to catch mice. So mice are, um, the big cats or house cats are predators of mice. Can you think of another animal that could be a predator? What about bears and fish? Are bears predators of fish? Yeah. Have you ever seen a big giant bear in the, in the wild in real life? They can be really big and scary. And what about if you got in front of that bear and her babies? <gasps> oh my goodness, that mama bear would be so angry and she wants to protect her babies and you're in that way. And so you would be in danger. So the jungle and life can be dangerous. We don't face threats to the jungle or in predators in our daily lives. But one thing that is, is dangerous is dishonesty. Do you guys know what that is? When you're dishonest, it means you're not telling the truth. So even something as small as a little white lie, or maybe like a trick you played on somebody, you're not telling them the truth, doesn't seem very dangerous. But in today's lesson, we're gonna learn about a man and his wife that told a lie and it cost them their entire life right there they lied to god and they lost their life so i want you guys to take your bibles if you've got them with you um and we're going to turn to the new testament or i mean the book of acts chapter 5 verse 1 through 11. So in Acts chapter 5, verse 1 is where we're going to start. So it's towards the end of your Bible. So you can see my Bible, this is the beginning part way over here, and then this is towards the end, and my New Testament's falling out. Let's put it back in. So verse 1, chapter 5, it says, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife, also being aware of it, and brought a certain part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. Turn the page. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last breath. 
So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in. Remember her name? Sapphira. Um, not knowing what had happened. So she came in, didn't know what had happened. And Peter asked, asked her, he said, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that the spirit of the Lord, oh, sorry, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Then immediately, right away, she fell down at his feet and breathed her last breath. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Ananias and Sapphira wanted, to be, wanted people to think that they were really generous. They wanted everyone to see them selling their possessions and giving it to the Lord. So they had a piece of property and they sold it. So have you guys ever sold anything? Yep. So when you sell things, you get money or you know somebody who sold something and they get money. And so they had told people they were wanted to give this money to the church. But they decided together that they were only going to give so much. They weren't going to give the whole thing. They lied about it. So they kept some of the money back for themselves. And so, and they came in and they said to Peter, here are all of our possessions, everything. We've sold it all. Here it is. Is that true? Is that what they did? No, they lied. They didn't. That wasn't all their possessions. That wasn't the sale of all of it. So they lied and they didn't sit well with God. God does not like it when we lie. That's one of those things we call sin. Not good. And God wants people to always be honest. And we should always want to be honest with people anyway. Um, and so because they weren't honest with God and with Peter and the church, what happened to them? Yeah, they died. That's pretty severe. That doesn't happen to us if we tell little white lies or if we lie. We don't always, God doesn't always just strike us dead because he wants us to learn from our mistakes. But Ananias came in and he told Peter, this is all of the money for my possessions. And Peter said, why, why are you letting the Satan do that to you? Why are you saying you, you did these things and you didn't? And immediately, not even the next breath, he couldn't even say, but... He died. God killed him. Took his, all of his breath out of him and his body went and he died. Well then three hours later, so nobody told Sapphira that her husband had died. And she came in three hours later and Peter asked her if that was true. If they had sold all of their possessions for this amount. It would be like saying, say I had five dollars and I decide that I want to give somebody two dollars and I said this is all the money I have is that true no because I have three dollars left so Ananias or Sapphira came in and she agreed with Peter she said yep that's exactly how much we had and again she didn't even get to take another breath and say but and she died oh my goodness so lying can damage your reputation it can damage your witness of, uh, to God, for God. We talked about last week about sharing who God is and, and what he means to us with our friends. And if our friends know that we're liars and we're not telling the truth, are they going to want to hear about who God is and what he means to us? They're probably not going to want to listen to us. They're not going to trust us because we lie to them. So we need to run away from our lies. Run away from lies that other people are telling us, like you would run away from a predator, like a jungle cat or a snake. Ooh, snakes can be dangerous. They can be poisonous and they can squeeze the life out of you. And a lie can do that too, just like Ananias and Sapphira. They lied and God squeezed the life out of them. 
<laughs> we need to guard our reputation by always telling the truth. So when you're in a jungle, uh, and always try to keep yourself from predators and in your daily life, predators can be those lies that can get us into trouble that can ruin our reputations and that can lead other people to not want to follow us and our examples and then ultimately don't want to follow God because they see, Oh, I don't want to do what they're doing. And that doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense to me. So it's much harder to get our reputation back when we've lost it. Most often when we're tempted to lie, it's because we're trying to protect ourselves. Maybe you've made a mistake and you want to cover it up or Maybe you've done something uh, to somebody else and something you weren't supposed to do and you don't want to get caught. Well, the first mistake may be a hit to your reputation already. And then you add a lie on top of that mistake. Oh my goodness. It gets worse. So here's the thing I need you to remember is that when there's a crisis, you can actually strengthen your reputation by telling the truth. Oh my goodness. We all make mistakes and some of those mistakes are easy it's for other people to look over when you say hey I made a mistake I'm sorry we're all sinners and everyone knows and understands that there are consequences to those mistakes uh, to the bad decisions all the time when you become a person who owns your mistakes and admits uh, rather than covers them up that you've made a mistake, then your reputation will grow in the eyes of most people. And they'll be able to say, hey, I trust that person. They're an honest person. They've told me the truth. They made some mistakes and they're okay. So teachers, parents, coaches, and even when you grow up, your bosses will appreciate when you own up to your own mistakes. And you can say, hey, I made a mistake. I'm sorry and it'll keep your reputation intact and they'll go huh i can trust that person because when they made a mistake they told me also helps to build your integrity that's a really big word shows that you're trustworthy shows that even in the face of mistakes and difficult things you're going to be a person that they can rely on they can come to if they make a mistake or if they need help a jaguar might take your life, but a single white lie can change your life by damaging your reputation. Even when you get stuck in a lie, no matter how big or how small, it can change the way people see you and view you as being a trustworthy person and taking away your integrity. So let's be people who value honesty, value telling the truth, and want to guard ourselves and our reputations as we guard our lives, as we tell the truth, always telling the truth. Let's be good witnesses of who Christ is and the things that he's done in our lives so that other people can come to trust him as well.